So uh, good. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Let me just do a quick introduction. So good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. To yes, sure. The, uh, so good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the 49th monthly meeting of the Strongly Sustainable Business Model Group. Um, we are recording this meeting, so anybody who does not wish to be recorded should leave now. Um, the list of people attending this meeting and the agenda for today's meeting are posted on our wiki, and a link to the wiki uh, post for this meeting is now in the chat for anybody who'd like to see uh, what, we're, what Ford is about to talk about and uh, to see the list of who's here and their affiliations. Um, based on the way our technology works, um, I know there's a little bit of a lag this afternoon between us and Claude, maybe a second or so. Uh, this is going to make it quite difficult for us to interrupt verbally. Um, so I would suggest we try and use the chat. Um, and uh, uh, Claude will try and monitor the chat, although uh, uh, Adobe Connect makes it quite difficult for the presenter to see the chat. But we'll, we'll see whether that works. Um, so uh, we'll try and uh, do it interactively, I think, Claude. But uh, if we need to, we'll, we may have to have yes. some questions at the end. So Claude, uh, over to you. Uh, I'll let you introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, first, uh, thank you to you, uh, Anthony, and uh, to Abil to invite me to that uh, to do that presentation today, uh, or today afternoon for you, and today evening uh, for us, and uh, for Andres. And uh, it's uh, really a pleasure to, to be here. Uh, I will present you uh, some things about uh, our association, social business models that we created uh, three years ago in, here in Switzerland. Uh, I will start my presentation with a small overview of uh, some things. And uh, if you want to, to uh, if you have some questions, I'm looking also to the chat so uh, you can uh, ask uh, every time you want to ask something. Okay, let's go. So I will start with a small uh, introduction. Oh, oh, okay, okay, that's fine. And uh, that uh, for that introduction, I invite you to go into my uh, spaceship, and we are going up to see the entrepreneurial galaxy from uh, a long way uh, from here. And uh, in the first end at the left side of the galaxy, we have uh, all the financial uh, speculation enterprises where uh, you uh, put money, you harvest money, the fertilizer is still money. You work only with money. If we go to the other side, uh, to the right side of the galaxy, we have an extreme difference because we have philanthropy and charity where the money is just uh, harvest to be able to do human centric things to help in social causes if we come back close to the speculation i think that you recognize george clooney with uh, uh, the representation of the big multinational companies and uh, with the traditional market with profit maximization. But if we go close to those uh, big uh, multinationals, at least in Switzerland, I think also that in Canada it's also a little bit the same, we have a huge, huge tissue of small and medium enterprises. Uh, in Switzerland, it's about 95% of our economy is from SME, small and medium enterprises, where the money is not uh, the maximum objective, but the ability to work is really the objective of those enterprises and to pay the salaries. If we go back a little bit close to the center, I'm sure that you are going to recognize a new model <laughs> It's the flourishing uh, business models with Nabil and Anthony. I knew he was but <laughs> but uh, in the middle, between the flourishing uh, business models and the charity, 
there is still a, a gap and I'm sure that we recognize uh, do, uh, this guy. It's uh, Mohammed Yunus, the creator of the social entrepreneur uh, concept. And when we look to the traditional enterprises, multinationals, and the dialogue with uh, Mohammed Yunus, uh, from the side of the multinational, you have profit and growth. What else? It's a famous uh, phrase uh, from uh, George Clooney. And uh, the answer from uh, Mohammed Yunus is very simple. No loss, no dividends. So really, uh, the social enterprises must have some profit because they must not have no loss. But they, not, they are not going to give back dividends for the people that put money in those uh, enterprises. Okay, that was a, just a short introduction. Let's go back to the earth. And uh, before I start uh, <laughs> the presentation of uh, our association, uh, I, I had a really a very good impression uh, from a po uh, PowerPoint from Patricia Kembich. And I just make a sm uh, small adaptation. Uh, she told there is a, a split between a land of profit only organization and land of sustainable flourishing enterprises. And we have also a split between social entrepreneurship and charity. So uh, that was just a joke that I have done with uh, the very nice design she had in uh, her PowerPoint. Okay, let, let me, uh, if you have some questions, please, uh, you can interrupt me. Uh, it's not a problem. I'm going to present our association very shortly. We have one mission. It's uh, to promote the co-creation, sharing, and the use of development and revision tools for social business models. For all the actors, for all the organization, that want to create uh, more impact, uh, social enterprise, enterprise in the field of social economy and solidarity economy. The, our objective and mission is to put for them uh, trainings, uh, tools, and so on and so on. Our mission really is to help them to be more sustainable. Uh, we have values. Uh, collective intelligence, uh, everyone's responsibility for social wealth, uh, welfare, and so on. I can, you can read all that. It's better that if I read that for you. We have normally, as every association, a central call. Uh, we were founded in May 21st, in, that is three years ago. Today, we must have around 120 members. Uh, we have a committee of seven people. And when it's necessary, we have uh, working groups that we create. We are really a non-profit, and we ha still have no employers for the moment. Uh, we have uh, some activity domains. So the first domain is the tools co-creation. Uh, for the moment, it's more uh, the tools were more created by a, a small nucleus of people, but we encourage the passive uh, creation. We have already more than 57 tools, and for each tools, we have different instruments like uh, uh, Excel spreadsheets, uh, documents uh, for documentation, and so on. Our tools, they are classified by ca the canvas, the block of the canvas, and the, ca uh, the keywords. And we are now starting the creation of a classification by entrepreneurial skills. The second activity area, very linked to the first one, is the internet site diffusion. Uh, in three years, we already have uh, more than 232,000 user sessions and half million of page views. And very interesting.
Epstein, uh, the first country, because our site is in French, so the first country is France, uh, second Switzerland, but there is a lot of countries from uh, North Africa, but also Canada, Belgium, and so on. Uh, in social networking, we have uh, already uh, 465 members on LinkedIn. We are close to the 1,000 uh, likes on Facebook. We also are on Horyu. It's a, a Facebook for uh, cultural and, uh, and social development. And uh, we already uh, have a presence on SlideShare. We are now, and that's a, a point, very important point in uh, our uh, strategy for this year, is really the training. Uh, we have the chance to, to have in our committee uh, the director of uh, LMS uh, training organization, uh, e-learning training organization. They have a platform and they will uh, offer the platform for us. So we are going to put a lot of things on e-learning. For each tool, we hope to, to have e-learning. But we also work with face-to-face uh, -face training, with webinars, videos, online presentations, and so on. Our main target people are end users trainers, consultants, and also service providers, because the next uh, activity area is to have a, a small directory, uh, yellow pages, of service providers linked to the tools. So you will see uh, in next uh, slides that uh, people are linked. Um, OK. Uh, <laughs> Uh, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to answer to you, uh, Anthony. Uh, the, so, for the moment, we don't have too many people uh, linked to that, those yellow pages, but the idea is that if uh, somebody from an organization has a problem to use a tool, he will know which service provider he can contact to have a support. Uh, it's very difficult to see how many people, uh, hmm, I, I try to remember, I think that not with all the tools, but with a part of, uh, of the tools, um, in total during those three years, I think uh, already uh, because we, we do some presentation, short training in universities, uh, I will say about 200 people. Uh, our goal for 2016 is not defined yet. <laughs> but uh, that's very interesting because we are starting now. Uh, I have one of my, the other members of my committee that's going to Burundi uh, to train coaches, uh, entrepreneurship coaches for young uh, entrepreneurs. So we are trying now really to do the best in training of trainers. So it's very difficult to say exactly uh, the number that we, we have as goal. For the moment, our goal is to put on the air the e-learning platform. Uh, we already uh, have another activity area. Uh, we call that uh, red threads uh, and specific guides. Uh, we have a bunch of tools. You will see uh, a little bit later. But uh, those tools, uh, let we say we, we are constructing some sequences of using the tools to get some results for different phases of the organization. So the idea is to uh, construct for funders, uh, companies, uh, companies, foundations, uh, some specific guides for them to be able to have a better comp uh, comparison between the projects they receive. 
So uh, this will start, I think, uh, this year. For the next year, we have an ambitious uh, objective is to have a database of open source social business models. The idea is very simple. It's like open source software or hardware. So you take social business models and you put, you give uh, a tool for the defi definition, uh, a re uh, recording the defi definition of the social business models and the organization put them in open source so they can share and receive back comments and uh, improvements to their social business models. And the last one, it's not exactly the last, we have a, we are trying to have alliances and partnerships. We already have uh, with uh, one organization signed. There is the next one we are going to sign uh, uh, this month. And we are also, we have a partnership with uh, Leonardo uh, 345. Uh, it's more or less a TMS or Bellbean uh, similar profile tool uh, for the work preferences and we have distribution agreement for uh, to distribute that product for the NGOs. It's this uh, product, uh, it gives you uh, with a questionnaire that you make uh, through internet, what is your profile of uh, what you like really to do in a team. We have our vision uh, of the future, external and internal. So we want to be recognized as a local, national, international platform for concept, co-creation, good governance and management tools for social business models. Okay, uh, that was the presentation of uh, social business models. Now I'm going just to make another introduction about uh, uh, business model canvas. Yes, I'm just waiting. Uh, Andres is uh, typing something. I suppose Andres has a question. Okay, okay. Uh, when we say tools, uh, it's really offline except for the tool that we will have to put online for the, the definition of open uh, source social business models, all the tools that we, we offer to uh, the community, they are uh, descriptions. We will see that a little bit later. They are descriptions and the people can just read that, use them. Uh, it's like if I give you a SWOT definition, how to use a SWOT, and you are going to use a SWOT. You don't need any uh, online software. Okay. Uh, there is a long, long time ago, a lot of people, gurus, uh, management gurus, started to create a lot of canvas, because canvas, it's really easy to, to represent something. So. I recognize something here. Uh, okay, uh, canvas. Really, they are not uh, not missing. If we go in the 60s, uh, one of the canvas very interesting, and you can see that it tr brings already something that you have in the newest canvas. It was the logic framework that was uh, created uh, uh, by a European community and uh, World Bank to facilitate the presentation of projects, cooperation development projects. But you can already see that you have activities, resources, you have outputs, so it's, and you, but you have also outcomes and global goals. So that's something that you are going to recognize in other ones. There is a famous one, 
uh, that was done by Alexander Osterwalde and Yves Pinier. Uh, they are from uh, Switzerland, uh, the, uh, very close from me because I'm living near, uh, close to Lausanne and they were from uh, UNIL, University of Lausanne. And they do the business model generation canvas, really a success story. And I think that every one of you uh, already uh, used it sometimes. We used it that a long time. Interesting because the value proposition was not very, very clear. Uh, if it was a need or something uh, you did propose to your customers, they created a second canvas. It's the value proposition canvas. So you can see already the gain creators, pain reliefs for the gains and pains of the customers. So it's a bridge between the customers and what you are going to offer to respond to the needs of your customers. It's very interesting because at the University of St. Gall, uh, it's another uh, city in Switzerland, they have done a exactly a mirror or quite exact mirror of the business model generation canvas. Interesting because uh, you see that uh, in the European way or Occidental way of reading, with the canvas they have uh, done with the mirror effect, so you are going to read first the customers, after that the relationship, and after that the value proposition. So first you are going to think to your customers, and after that you are going to create activities, use resources to do that. We have all the canvas that were, were done, uh, the lean canvas, using always, or quite always, the same geography with nine blocks and so on. With the uh, lean canvas starting, starting to change a little bit because we have problems and solution and key metrics from Ash Moria. Uh, we have an uh, Australian guy that has done has done a social lean canvas, just putting more the purpose of the organization and social and environmental benefits. We have the accelerator. So you, you see, it's quite every time the same uh, segments, same blocks that you have. Uh, you have a social business model canvas. That's not uh, ours because it's uh, from the Social Innovation Lab. We have, uh, this one is very interesting because it's a business model Zen canvas. Uh, because it's a cube. One of the problems when you create a canvas, it's how you have the closest uh, path between two blocks. And how, uh, and this canvas, you can uh, bend it like a cube. So the customers, is going to be close to the cooperator for innovation, is going to be close to the revenues and uh, to the empathy and the problem. So every face is close to four other faces. Very interesting, the three-dimensional. And around that, they put also the, the lean concept with generating ideas, do and test, learn and pivot, and exploring opportunities. You have another Canadian uh, organization that has created MySocialBM, My Social Business Model. It's Im Imagination for People. And uh, I've seen this one, I, I don't remember exactly where. Uh, some guys also from Canada that has created uh, this one, the Flourishing Business Mo uh, Canvas. And if you see, that's very interesting because the evolution is very light between all those canvas. Uh, if you take, uh, for example, the uh, cycle of the Lean Startup and you compare that to the Deming PDA, uh, PCDA uh, cycle, it's uh, more or less the same thing. Uh, with all that, we have uh, similarities with uh, the business model canvas, the lean canvas, 
the logic framework and we have the social business model canvas. So, <laughs> some question? I don't think so, nobody is typing. Okay, let's continue. Um, the methodological approach that we use, uh, we have a combination of five canvas, tools, red threads or guides, and a social entrepreneur skills framework that we have created all, uh, yes, Anthony? I'm not uh, listening to you. Go, um, I'm, uh, be before you go into the, uh, the detail, could you just yes. give your, so, so th th thank you for reviewing the, the kind of uh, landscape of canvases. Um, yeah. Could you go back one slide? Oh, sure. And one more, there we go. So uh, um, what, what was it, when, when you look at the, all the canvases that you show on the top and the sides, Yes. what was the, the problem, what was the gap um, that you saw with all of those canvases that led you to think that there was a need for a, a new canvas, uh, an addition? Did, did your, what was the problem you, you thought the other canvases didn't solve? What, what problem were you trying to solve with the, with the new social business model canvas? Okay. Uh... I think the, the answer is going to, to come a little bit later, uh, but I'm okay. going already to see. The problems that I've seen uh, in the different canvas is or they were very complicated or they were, uh, it was all, always missing something. So the, the difficulty was how can we create something uh, that is at the same time complete and simple. So for that reason, uh, you can see, I'm um, just going back here, uh, all the nine blocks from the business model canvas, we concentrated that in six blocks. Uh, the key activities, key resources, they are in the with what block. Uh, customer relationship, channels, they are here in the buy what block. So we concentrated for having the opportunity to including some more things. So we have the new, uh, the why uh, linked to the problems and we have the verifiable linked to the key metrics. Uh, the values at the middle linked to the purpose. So we have a business model canvas. So really for the business model, that is only with nine blocks. But it wasn't sufficient. So you will see we have the other uh, pizzas that goes on the top of this one. Is that more or less clear for the moment? We'll look forward to the detail as it comes out, and maybe we'll have some follow-up questions. Yes, okay. So, in, uh, in fact, we have a, a, a superposition of four canvas linked by a central canvas. So, first we have the business model canvas. It represents uh, the logical of the organization. It's a permanent model linked to the mission of the organization. So it defines really what is the organization for and what she is going to do today, uh, tomorrow, after tomorrow and during years. In the top of this one, we have another canvas, uh, the relational model canvas. It's uh, more linked to the management with the, all the shareholders. But we still have another stage. Uh, it's uh, the dynamic model. So we have a permanent model that is the business model canvas. 
And we have the strategy model canvas that goes to the dynamic of the organization. And uh, looking back to the flourishing uh, business model canvas, we have another stage, a kind of hat. It's the corporate social responsibility models. So if you look to that, uh, all those uh, canvas together, you have a lot of blocks. Uh, and they serve for us to uh, kind of backbones for all our tools. So all our tools are linked to one or more blocks of one or more canvas. Because all the canvas have blocks. Imagine putting all those blocks in just one canvas. It was absolutely impossible. So for that reason, we have that uh, organization uh, with a four-stage canvas and linked uh, between them with the, the fifth canvas, that is the value canvas. I hope I answered a little bit to your question. Let's go a little bit more to the, the canvas. So the first canvas. Uh, yes. So Claude, let, let me just try and play back what I think you said and see if we've understood. Um, so the gap that you saw with the existing canvases was um, that each canvas that had been developed looked at the business, looked at an organization from a different perspective, and it was yes. useful to help resolve that perspective. So for example, the lean canvas would be useful to help uh, starting a business from scratch, to help with the problem identification, for example. But when you try to um, work through the design of all the aspects of a socially orientated business, the canvases didn't fit together well. And so yes. what you've done is try to create an integrated set of tools that look across uh, what you believe are the necessary views on the design of a socially orientated business. Is, is that a... a yes, a, yes, yes. Uh, what we wanted really is to give a systemic view of the organization uh, for the organization, a social organization, uh, when it's created, but also uh, during its life with a strategy, with the time uh, she implements uh, corporate social responsibility and so on. So we, we tried to have uh, those perspectives uh, to integrated and you will see more that uh, that integration was done uh, during uh, one or two years, because we tried to really have the nice, the, the best integration possible. So uh, going back to the, the center, uh, the, the axis of the canvas, it's also a canvas that we call the shared values. And the shared values canvas, or the, the values, Really, for us, it's uh, the fuel, uh, it's the passion, it's uh, uh, what is going to give energy to your organization, but also consistency. And this one is already uh, created by blocks, where we have the individual beliefs, mix up, uh, it's uh, the idea of true or false, mix up with shared values, uh, it's a question of morality, uh, what is right, what is wrong. And this one mixed with the, uh, the history of the organization, it gives the organizational culture. And that culture uh, influences back the individual beliefs and the shared values. But uh, it has also an uh, influence on individual behaviors with formal or informal codes of conduct, uh, ethics, and so on. And when it's really translated to some documents, 
we speak about principle of actions. And it's turned into rules, uh, good practices, and this is going to give the coherence of the whole organization. Those principle of actions are really going to uh, to orient all the actions of the organization, and very interesting because they reinforce. They going to reinforce the organizational culture that's going to reinforce the shared values. So it's really a mix-up that is at the center of the organization. So you see it's at the center of our canvas, uh, that uh, shared values. And we first have, the first stage is the eight questions of social business models. The first question is the playing field, the context. Uh, where your organization is going to be immersed because it's going to be different if it's in Lausanne, if it's in Toronto, if it's in France. So uh, the context is what is around your organization and you are going to look from outside before looking inside. The second question necessary to create the business, what are the needs? Uh, problems or op opportunities or both that the organization with its values wants to solve. And automatically, if you have needs, you have beneficiaries, cl uh, clients, users that are feeling those needs. The next question is the channels channels and relation, uh, how you are going to communicate to your beneficiaries, clients, users that you exist and how you are going to uh, deliver your services. What? That's, uh, you see, what uh, products and services, it's not the first question. Uh, that you, you can find in many uh, organizations. We develop a product and after that we try to find who can use our product. No, it's the one, two, three, four, fifth question. So, what are you going to produce to respond to the need of the organization? With what? What you need to produce the products and services? and uh, produce your benefits, uh, it's infrastructure, people, every kind of resource, including financial. So all the financial that was in the business model generation canvas very clear, we put that the economic model is inside the with what. And we have another one that normally uh, you will not find the traditional market uh, economy results and impact. Normally in traditional economy you are talking about financial results. Here you are going really to speak about impact and for that reason it's close to the why, uh, the needs. So you are going to verify what if you really reach uh, the needs. Uh, okay, so, uh, mm, uh, sorry, Simon, I don't have in my presentation uh, the example of a complete canvas, but after that you can go to uh, our site, I will give you the, the address, and you can find uh, some examples of canvas, including our own canvas for social business models. Let me continue with the canvas. So you have the last question. It's in the context, who is going to support you, to support your organization? So you are going to find funders, uh, suppliers, uh, nice suppliers, not everyone. <laughs> every supplier, you are going to find partnerships, prescribers, and so on. Okay, let's go to the next canvas. 
So you will see that the, pro the governance canvas is really projected at the top of the business model canvas. Uh, first, we have all the, what we call the internal governance, that's also called uh, normally the, the corporate governance, where we include in that governance the, the members or the shareholders, uh, the committee, direction, <coughs> the staff, employers, but also the volunteers. Uh, as we talk about a social organization that use volunteers, so we implicitly tell that the volunteers has to be considered as part of internal governance. And they have something to say, very important for the organization. The next um, degree of uh, governance, we close it the border governance because it's at the border of the organization. Some people call that the micro environment where we have the customers, uh, direct beneficiaries, the partners, suppliers, funders, because they have, they may have a strong influence in your organization decisions. <clears throat> they are not part, really di direct part of the decisions, but uh, if a customer uh, doesn't like, or if the customers doesn't like your services, they really have a strong influence on your decisions. And we have a third uh, governance that we call external uh, governance because the influence that it has on uh, the organization is not so strong. But we cannot neglect that influence. And the concurrence influence, uh, the decision you are going to take in uh, your organization, the medias, the opinion makers, your prescribers, and the politics and public sectors, they have one importance. Okay, let's go one uh, stage upper, and we have, oh, okay, that's a resume. We have the next stage, it's the strategy. And it's also more or less projected on the top of the business model, especially you will see on those three blocks. Okay, first, the, the strategy is construct uh, around a vision that you have uh, for your organization, a uh, vision of the future in 20 or 10 years or five years, depends how far you want to, to have a look. And you can create some scenarios uh, with that vision and you can group some assumptions in different scenarios. With that, you also need a diagnostic and evaluation because it's, uh, you are going to use that as a starting point for your strategy. And here you have a small projection uh, on the business model canvas, uh, because we use uh, three uh, vectors of uh, strategy, efficiency, the costs, uh, producing more with less, the efficacy, or the quality, uh, the performance of your products or services, and the impact. So you see that the efficacy is close to the distribution, the efficiency is close to the, uh, the, the production and the product itself, and the effectiveness is just uh, above the why a question that you have on the business model. And once you have defined your strategy, you convert into actions and projects. So those are the blocks for the strategy. And at the top of that, <laughs> the fourth stage, you can see here the icons of the business model canvas. And we took the ISO uh, 26000 and we have six central questions uh, of the ISO 26000 
that were also arranged to be uh, more or less projected on top of the business model canvas. So you see the consumer issues is projected on the who, the also the fair operating practices close to the who, community involvement and development close to the context, human rights close to the human resource that you have here, labor practices also, and the environment very close to the, the product itself and the logistic of delivery. It's not perfect, but it's more or less. <laughs> okay, uh, this one, uh, this was the five canvas. Now uh, we have a temporal dimension. When uh, we looked at the creation of an organization in the first years, and uh, we divided in some phases with the uh, pre-creation phases and creation phases and post-creation phases. Uh, we have a first phase of curiosity because we need and we know that people that one day will be uh, entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs or flourishing entrepreneurs, they need to observe and discover what is the business. Uh, with the phrase, uh, what, what if one day I will be an entrepreneur? So this is one phase where we can do something. After that, those people go into the conception phase, uh, looking to the market, looking to the, uh, the playing field. They will find pro uh, problems to solve, opportunities opportunities so it's really an observation phase until the people the future entrepreneur has an ID. After that we enter in uh, maturation so the transformation of an ID into a business model and a project. After that once you decide that okay I go there is an implementation phase where normally it takes one to three months or a little bit more, depends the project, where it's really you are going to uh, direct a project, implementation project. It's really project management. Once you have implemented, uh, you take off until, uh, it can take six months to two years, sometimes more than two years, until you reach the break-even points. So it's really getting the first clients growing until you have number of clients or beneficiaries sufficient for your organization to be able to run. After that, okay. Ah, uh, interesting your, your question because I wanted to say that this is represented as linear. Uh, for sure, you are not going to fly before uh, the curiosity phase. But conception, maturation, they you turn. Uh, uh, sometimes you start with the conception, you reach the maturation, and you pivot because it doesn't work. After that, you go to an implementation. Maybe you have to go back to the maturation because something is not going uh, okay. Uh, take off. So you are still running a PDCA, but it's a very, very long time PDCA. Uh, you have Lean Startup that goes maybe very fast here. Just you have the first clients, early adopters during the takeoff. So those phases, they are not really sequence phases. They can overlap uh, during uh, many, uh, many times. I'm just waiting for the question uh, from Anthony. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly, exactly that. Uh, you still have uh, to 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 make a verification, validation, to be sure that you are going doing something right. 
So exactly what you say. Uh, okay, so those are red threads. So they are sequences of tools that you can use. And here you have a representation. This is a Prezi. Uh, you can uh, see this one. Uh, you will be able uh, on the PowerPoint that is already in the Dropbox to to go directly to that link. And there is a Prezi uh, presentation where we can, uh, it's not finished, but uh, it's still in uh, construction. But you have really the, the different phases, conception, uh, maturation, implementation, and you already have some tools uh, linked to the red threads. So that's very interesting to see that those grapes of tools linked to the, but uh, it's a red thread, so you can go back, you can make some, uh, oh, I don't know the name, <laughs> turn around and so on. Okay, uh, about the tools, uh, so I think I'm going to, to answer to uh, one question that we had before. Uh, from I think that's from Andreas. Andres. Uh, we are trying to have a standard page. Not all the tools are already presented in that standard page. Uh, but those tools are the, all the new tools are presented on the standard page. Uh, on the standard page of a tool, so you have the social networks, uh, so you can publish. You have, oh, okay, you have a tool state indicator uh, because we have, as we are working in a co creation process, so the tools uh, go through different phases. There is a redaction phase, so the tool is already visible, but uh, it's not guarantee that it's useful because it's still in redaction. Uh, there is another th other phase, it's pre-publication. So it's not totally sure, but you can already use it, but it's perfectible. And there is a publication phase. So when we think that we have done, uh, we have received and integrated uh, the comments, and the next release will be in one year, six months, one year, one or two years. Uh, the next uh, slot is a tool positioning indications. So in which phase of the life cycle of the organization for the preparation, revision of the organization, to which canvas it's related, what is the complexity, uh, what is recommended if you it's just one person or a team that works with that or the whole organization and what is the effort and we also have a resume of the tools a description uh, who is going to use why using that tool and so on yes Anthony um, so I, my observation when I first came across this uh, across your website and all of this material on it, um, I was immensely impressed. I mean, the, the amount of work that you guys have put into the infrastructure to support the breadth and depth of tools and, and how to apply them is, is really very uh, impressive. Um, and, uh, and and obviously my, my French isn't terribly good, so I'm, I'm not fully appreciating everything, but I can see it's, it's very impressive. So you've got a very solid content management system here. And my question was, um, how have you, this is an extraordinary amount of work, how have you funded uh, the development of this and how many people have contributed uh, to this? <laughs> For the moment, uh, we only worked with uh, volunteers. Uh, the, the, the internet site, it doesn't cost a lot. So it's uh, people that give time to work on the project. Only that. And, and did the, the tool that you use for the, the, the infrastructure behind these pages, 
is that something you built or did, is that something that was donated or no 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 it's based on it's a drupal it's drupal okay yeah, it's open source cms and we use that, and uh, we uh, configure the the Drupal uh, site to to be able to present those things. So that's really essentially uh, we didn't have to pay somebody to create a site for us. We just created it, and increment. We have we had a group for defining some things. We had a group to create something. I had one mission that uh, uh, one guy put the site uh, with a multilingual architecture infrastructure. So now we are going to be able to publish also things in English. So only volunteer work. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. Uh, the next part of the tool standard page, we have the description of the tools, what are the concepts associated to the tool, and how to use. A uh, chapter about how to use, what are the resources that you need, all the steps that you, you are going to, to follow to use, to make the best use possible of the, the tool. At the bottom of the page, we have also the instruments. Uh, okay, it's in French here, but it's a list of forms, spreadsheets, posters that uh, you can use with the tool. So with the, all the download links. Uh, we have here, it's very interesting. You remember I talk about uh, the yellow page of service providers. Prestataire is a service provider. So when the service providers uh, fill up their description, they choose also which tool they use, they are able to use, they are able to support. And when an organization go to the tool, she's going to see the organization then can help with the tool. So it's not uh, the main objective of that yellow page, it's not to present globally the service providers, but is to be able for the organization to find a service provider from the tool aspect. And we also have uh, cross links to all the useful tools, blog, articles and videos, etc. between our bunch of uh, things. Okay, um, I'm not going to explain any tools that we have, but we have tools or description tools for the canvas, how to use the canvas, different canvas, uh, business model. We had, but we are not no more using a second level of the, for the business model canvas, more detailed, but we found it a little bit messy. Uh, we have a uh, uh, tool for the identification of uh, shareholders, strategy, social responsibility. And that's interesting because we have, uh, uh, we are using, and that's somebody that told us, but your canvas is very interesting. Why don't we use that for project management? And we found that, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. So we have a small variation of the social business model tool, a canvas, and it's a, a creation, project creation canvas with the same questions, with all the questions like timing and so on. But you basically work with the same questions. Um, we have uh, what we call cross-cutting tools. They are not directly uh, linked to the canvas, but they are linked to the people, uh, the project leaders, the all, uh, enterprise owners. So the, we have the referentials of uh, social um, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial skills. Oh, sorry. Uh, we have different things. 
uh, we have some tests. What is your profile? Uh, what is your equilibrium of uh, what you prefer, what kind of work you prefer, and so on, really to help the people to find themselves as uh, social entrepreneurs. Uh, we have tools related to the values canvas. We have tools also for the business model. So you, we have uh, all those tools, Pestel, uh, rich picture, uh, problem tree, uh, objective tree, logic framework, uh, client analysis, client and needs, client needs and services, and so on. A bunch of tools. We have, for the other part of the social business model canvas, we have also something very important. It's uh, how you do to validate the hypothesis you are making with your canvas. So it's some recommendation how you select the hypotheses that are the most important to be verified. Uh, concurrence analysis, uh, communication tools, organization to activity tools, and so on. Uh, we cannot live without also some uh, financial tools. Uh, we have one very interesting <coughs> that you can use, sorry, that you can use uh, at, with your, you coach some people that want to create an organization just at, at the first beginning. Uh, it's a one page uh, preliminary uh, financial viability evaluation. It's not a tool that's going to tell you Oh, that's going to be good. You are going to make your money sufficiently to, to set up your social organization. But the tool is going to tell you, oh, guy, I think that you will have some problems, very big problems. Think again. Uh, we have uh, one microfinance uh, expert that is finishing uh, financial uh, uh, tool uh, to do a uh, prevision tool. Uh, we also have a model for a social business plan. And yes, on the in. Ah, no. <laughs> uh, we have tools related to the governance canvas. Uh, how to delegate re the responsibilities. We have elevator pitch uh, tool. And a bunch of strategy tools where you can recognize the SWOT, opportunities and treats, evaluation, risk analysis, uh, key success factors, and how you make some uh, first diagnostics when you, you try to make a strategic repositioning of your organization. I'm waiting the question or observation from Ondine. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, Andreas, uh, just one second. I don't know uh, if Ondine uh, is still wanting wanted wanting to to put a question. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> the first question I read, I try to answer. Ah, both are typing. Who is going? Ah. Ah, <laughs> very interesting because, okay, we, we are officially an association. Uh, in Switzerland, uh, it's very special because you can create uh, an association, a uh, non-governmental organization, non-profit organization. Uh, basically, you need two people. You can just write the status of the organization and you make a, a constitution assembly. It, may, it might be with two persons and your organization is already created. 
you don't need to register your organization NGO, until in Switzerland the the yearly cash flow is uh, lower uh, no is higher than 100,000 francs Swiss francs so we are really not uh, officially we, we are legally but not uh, officially registered as an NGO and finding volunteers it's only networking networking meeting people uh, and doing communication and you know that's very funny because uh, we started to put some mission uh, we call we have a special mission we want somebody to translate something uh, it's an effort of uh, two hours who is going to give two hours of his time and we put that on the social networks and we found the guy that has done the whole uh, articulation of the site to support multi-language uh, by that way okay uh, what have been the main benefits and main barriers you have observed with end users and entrepreneurs engaging with the canvas uh, uses again with the tools of their own okay uh, it varies a lot <laughs> this is not a good answer uh, I, I think that the main barrier uh, that we can see with end users uh, social entrepreneurs uh, engaging with the canvas at the beginning uh, they they imagine that they know everything so uh, when you put on the wall uh, a poster of the canvas and you give post it to the those people and you tell those, those people oh, okay show me all go through your head it's a brainstorming game and at the beginning beginning they think they know they have all the answers but okay okay that's fine Anthony but at the end uh, they see that they have to work something so I think the main benefits that I've seen uh, when I'm use uh, I'm doing some workshops and so on using the tools it's funny because the main benefit it's not when the project owner or the future enterprise owner is using the tool but it's when all the people that has nothing to see uh, I, I use uh, collective intelligence and when you have people that uh, has nothing to see they put the their silly questions and they uh, that silly questions many times are very clever questions so I think this is one benefit that you can have using canvas different canvas uh, some tools are very easy to easy to use so they can use it without any problems and if the complexity of the tool is a little bit harder so they can uh, try to find somebody of social business model team or some uh, enterprise that is in our yellow pages to help give help with the tools uh, as I told you we, we already uh, are preparing uh, one week uh, training of the trainers that we are going to, to give in Burundi and maybe in Lima uh, because we want to be able to have a, a bigger replication okay uh, I'm going just to I, I'm reaching the end so we have already some project tools with the canvas planification life cycle how to select projects how to search information and that's all. <laughs>
So I think that Anthony is very happy because we already sti uh, we still have uh, about 16 minutes. So please, if you have any questions, I'm ready. So I, um, uh, I, is we, we, we were uh, chatting uh, a, a moment ago in the room here, and what, one question that uh, we, we all have here is, um, could you talk a little bit about how you define a successful social business? A successful, uh, for me, a successful uh, business, a social business model is a business model that can live, so that has really resources to implement and uh, produce the impact he want to produce. Uh, it can take one month, two months, one year, two years, three years. Uh, for example, uh, we don't have uh, already a good economic model at social business models because uh, people uh, make some donations and so on, but we have not a fixed revenue because we wanted first starting to uh, offer all the tools and the methodology. But now with the trainings, we are going to have already some money that's going to uh, start running our economic model. Did I answer to your question? Um, not really. Um, we, we were, not really, okay. When we, uh, but the, ask the Simon's question and, and I'll have a second crack at it in a second. Okay. Uh, let, uh, are you using uh, these tools to work with uh, potential entrepreneurs who don't necessarily have Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we are. This is uh, this is one of our main goals uh, to have very pragmatical tools. Uh, so the, the the idea that we we had at the first beginning when we created the association is that there is a lot of potential social entrepreneurs that has passion that has very good uh, will to do some good things, but they don't have a, a business background. For that reason, we try, uh, but that's not always uh, easy, to create tools that they can use uh, easily without needing really a business background. Uh, in Brazil, uh, we already have uh, uh, the possibility to start. We already had contacts with uh, Brazil because I lived in Brazil during uh, 23 years, so I know well the 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 context. And uh, we will need to translate those tools in Portuguese to be able to diffuse that also in Brazil. Uh, Okay, Andreas. Uh, no, we don't have a standard. Uh, I think it's it's uh, it would be fine to have. Uh, there is already uh, some uh, standard big corporations and so on. But it's really not easy to find uh, evaluation method that can measure the success of the the organization, the social organization. Uh, for me, a social organization is successful when he is still alive and creating impact, social impact. I'm just waiting of our members. Uh, yes, I know that because I did assist uh, 
the the presentation uh, I oh I don't remember the name you you can remember the name for everybody but I didn't have time to to really go deeper into the uh, yes Bob Willard it it was Bob Willard <coughs> but I didn't have time really to go deeper in the future fit business benchmark but I will have to do that. But for us, I, I, I'll just observe that um, one of the questions that we have been responding to, although we're not often asked, is so what is a flourishing business? What is a successful flourishing business or a successful sustainable business or a successful social business? Uh, it, it's it's a question we, we usually try and answer, um, and maybe because we answer it before it's asked, we, we don't know whether it's actually a question people uh, are interested in the answer. But it's, it seems to us that um, one of the challenges we have is we have a lot of people uh, with a uh, we have a lot of people talking about what does success look like, um, but and without that... reference to the science that we have that could inform that answer. Yeah, but I, I think it's very, very difficult to do because uh, uh, when you want to see the success of a flourishing business or a social business uh, organization, uh, you are very linked to the social environmental uh, welfare. And this is very difficult to standardize because the, the approach of the welfare is different for different part of the population, is different uh, from one country to the other country, is different from one culture to the other culture. So I, I think it might be possible to have a local standards, but a global standard, I think it's impossible. That's my impression. That's one of the big challenges that uh, the, natural, the uh, future fit folks have, have worked on quite a lot is what, what yes, yes. context-based measures. Yeah. For that exact reason, yeah. Does anybody else have any other questions? I, I have one more, but I'll, I'll wait for others to go first. Let me see. I'm looking to... Andres, Ondine, Simon. And Nabil has no uh, question. You're, I think you're muted, Nabil. Yeah, we can't hear you, Nabil. Uh, yeah. No microphone for Nabil. Mm -hmm. uh, Can you so, hear me now? Have you looked? No. Yeah, I am. I am uh, reading. Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, I was just trying to say uh, this is a, a longer uh, conversation, Claude. Uh, but yeah. uh, there are many interesting areas of um, convergence, but also of discussion. You know, the, those questions about you know how you measure impact. You know, I, I think that question is is not necessarily. Uh, uh, identical with the question, how do you identify a flourishing business? I think uh, yes, a yes, I imagine, I imagine. Between the two. And, um, uh, and, and, you know, there is an ongoing conversation of what is needed, you know, um, uh, in, in each of those categories in order to achieve the overall change that, that we all need to, to achieve. But um, it would be great to have further conversations with you around uh, okay. those topics. Uh, yeah. It's going to be a pleasure. <laughs> okay, let me see the Simon. Have you looked uh, at using Simon Sinek's uh, Golden Circle to help with the central question of the why? No. <laughs> uh, but if you can give me uh, some references, uh, that would be very fine. So I can go straight and have a look. And um, I saw that Ondine is... Uh, 
Did Londine have a question? Yes, she's typing. Yes, she is typing. So maybe I'll, I'll just make my, my question as an observation since we're getting near to the, to the end yes. and, and then I'll, I'll have a few closing remarks. Um, the, the observation um, I have is that um, the, um, you, ha you have many different um, types of themes on your canvases um, from uh, some, so you, each of the, how do you refer to the blocks? Do you refer to each of the pieces in each of the canvases as blocks? Uh, <laughs> that's a that's a funny question. I, I think that uh, when uh, we first uh, started to create the canvas, uh, we looked at the uh, social uh, at the business canvas from uh, Pinier and Osterwalder. Okay, it's not sufficient. We looked we looked to the the logical framework. Okay, it's done for projects. So how can we uh, mix up all that and create uh, something uh, that's useful for social business? So we mix up a little bit from here, from uh, here. Uh, the central canvas, uh, we start with the business models. After that, one uh, guy of organization of our organization told that it's missing something at the middle. So we put the value canvas at the middle. So we grew up uh, when uh, during the conversations. So it's very difficult to say if we started with the blocks or with the canvas and divided the canvas into blocks. So, so my observation really is, and this is a, a, something that, to Nabil's point, is definitely uh, an area for further exploration. Um, in, in certainly in the business model canvas and the flourishing business canvas, um, each block, all the blocks are one type. Whereas in your canvas, some of your blocks are to do with um, things that are relatively static. So, for example, a, a, a resource or a process or a stakeholder. Some of them are quite dynamic. Um, they're to do with um, how things change over time. A number of the elements in the strategy canvas are, are yeah. like that. Um, some of them, some of the elements are actually examples. So, uh, if I recall well, in the Governance canvas. A lot of the blocks there are actually examples of potential actors in the uh, governance process. And so, yeah, because uh, the, the the I find that very interesting. That's that's certainly not the way the flourishing business canvas works, and it's not the way the business canvas uh, business. Mm, canvas yeah, works. yeah. Uh, so that's worthy of explanation. The other observation is um, the. Um, uh, I'm starting to understand that the um, the structure of the five canvases is um, can, it's not representational. It doesn't try to model uh, um, any any. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the, the context on the flourishing canvas of the environment, society, and the economy as a nested set of ideas. Mm -hmm. But we, we are no, that type of concept is embedded in your thinking, but it doesn't appear in your canvas. Yeah, I, the, I think that uh, the, the environment, uh, the re environmental resources uh, uh, are in the, the top, in the CSR uh, canvas. Because we we, we grew from the social uh, business model. We put the strategy model, we put the governance model, and we, we thought it was missing something. For that reason, we discussing with people, we put the CSR uh, canvas. Let me uh, answer to, to Ondine. Uh, if we already have worked with a large uh, organization, uh, we it depends what you you call large organization. 
uh, with social business models, we already worked with, I will say, medium organization, medium scale organization, association, uh, 20 years old association in Lausanne, uh, in uh, giving uh, French training for migrant people. Uh, we start now a project with uh, an organiza organization, uh, Samaritan, that is already 150 years old, uh, with about uh, 200 people uh, working with major part of uh, volunteers. Uh, but by my own, because all those tools, uh, I bring some uh, some experience from a long time ago because I'm not very very young. Huh? I had some uh, <laughs> kilometers be behind me, mm -hmm. and I, I, as I told to Simon, I lived in Brazil during a long time, and I had an enterprise in Brazil. And my last period in Brazil, I worked in a consultant group. Uh, organic group. Uh, everybody was uh, by standalone, but working the group, and we worked uh, for ministries, uh, some uh, from secretariats, and even from the uh, Central Bank of Brazil. So large cooperation, but from uh, the social business models aspect, I would say only medium organization. So, okay. Let, let, let me, but thank you. Let me just uh, uh, wrap up. I'll, I'll echo Simon's uh, comments and just put in the chat there. This has been a really interesting thought. I, I knew it will, would be. Uh, I, uh, I'm glad that we finally thank you very much. after uh, uh, some uh, uh, time to uh, have you present. And uh, thank you for the quality of your presentation and uh, the clarity of your speaking. Both have been wonderful. Not least because I know <laughs> I know it's now half past. Midnight for you, uh, and when yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and so I really thank you for staying up to be with us, and I uh, uh, really appreciate that. Um, I I have quite a few uh, thoughts about uh, exploring how members of the only sustainable business model group might perhaps contribute to some of your work and, and vice versa, uh, and so we should uh, plan some some thinking about that. Um, but uh, that's for a future time. Uh, so with that, thank you very much, Claude. That's been wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for attending. I'm so pleased the technology worked. <laughs> yeah, that, that was very good, Vic. <laughs> we had no problems today. Yeah, no problems. Uh, so I'm stop I also would like to thank you for the opportunity to present uh, social business models. And uh, for everybody that's uh, going to that did listen to me uh, tonight, that's going to listen to the record that you have done. Uh, I would say we still need help for social business models, and the best contribution that we can receive are tools, because we can receive tools and we can diffuse tools to a large. Uh, pub, uh, public. So, uh, I would like to thank you very much. It was a really a pleasure to, to be with you tonight, to everybody, and have a good night. Absolutely. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. A, a good evening for you. A good night for... Indeed.